quarters, space, spies, and what's this? A gaming mystery box? What? Midway Classic Arcade? No way! Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in to Electric Gaming. We are going to be going over Rampage, Joust, Paperboy, and the other games like Gauntlet that are in this box right here, right now, and stay tuned. I think one of the main themes of the 1980s arcade was quarters. Spending those quarters, finding those quarters, and uh, earning those quarters as well. You would find them underneath couch cushions, underneath the the couch itself. You would dig in the cars, ben, you know, beneath the seats, in between the seats, in the glove compartment, anywhere you could find quarters. And you would spend them at the arcade. And that's what it was all about. It was having fun. The first item on the list is a Defender's Little Miniature Tin. You can see the artwork on the front and on the back as well. Now this little thing has a little lock right here. You can fit your quarters in there for the arcade, for your when you go to the arcade. You can fit your cash, you can fit some cards. You can also fit your weed. Shh. So that is that item and enjoy the clip for the Defender. Defender is an arcade video game, and it was released in 1981. This game is a horizontal scrolling shooter. You can go to the left, and you can go to the right. Originally played with a joystick, and there was five buttons to control the ship itself with weapons. Now, the whole object to the game is to destroy the alien faders while protecting the astronauts on the landscape from abduction. Humans that are actually abducted return as mutants that attack the ship. Defeating the aliens allows the player to progress to the next level, but failing to do so, however, causes the planet to explode and the level to become populated with mutants. If you survive the waves of mutants, this results in the restoration of the planet. Now, players are only allotted three ships to progress through the game, which this is what made this game to be one of the, it's actually considered to be one of the most difficult games to play and uh, beat at the same time. Not impossible, but it still ranks up there very highly to be, uh, as far as the difficulty level is concerned. Defender was the most important title of the golden age of arcade video games. It sold over 55,000 units to become the company's best selling and one of the highest grossing arcade games ever. As you can see from the gameplay itself, this game is very hard to play. And I'm using the Xbox One controller with the joystick side and not the D-pad. Uh, I'm using all the buttons here to move around, uh, go back and forth, thrusting. Uh, I use hyperspace, trying to avoid all these enemies. There is a slight delay in the button configuration, so you want to take that into account. These guys are very fast, the enemies are quick, and their bullets seem to follow you to a certain extent, so um, be careful <clears throat> when you uh, move around not to get caught in the crossfire. But otherwise, this game was a very good game to play. It was very popular in the 80s, and space was a very common theme in the 80s as well. So this game to be seen in an arcade was uh, very common. 
and was probably one of the most prominent video game arcade cabinets to ever see in an arcade. Uh, I die several times in this, just playing it for the first time. But it's still fun. I love the music. I love that kind of style of music. Um, you can see on the background the colors and the shape of the space. And uh, that's game over for this game. Uh, stay tuned for the next. Joust is the next game we're playing. The Midway Classic Arcade Box came with a little Joust Boingler. I would say. It says it right here on the box. Uh, we're going to open this up right here and see what exactly it is. Joust is a game that you are a knight and you ride an ostrich. Like this. Oh, oh I see. That is cute. It, it bo It's like a bobblehead. Look at the detail on that. That was actually really good. Um bright red you can see the yellow ostrich you can see this jousting stick um they also gave us a bumper sticker you can put on your door you can put on your car or wall show how nerdy you are and really how old you are uh if you played this in the arcade um in the 1980s so joust is uh Again, you are a knight on a bird. Uh, we'll be going over that as well here in just a minute. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy. Ah, uh, Joust. Where are you? There you are. Now, the controls are very basic and very simple as you saw on the screen. You move left to right and up and down by flapping the bird. Um, this game was released in 1982, and it popularized the concept of two-player cooperative gameplay. The player uses a button and a joystick to control a knight riding a flying ostrich. Yes, guys, an ostrich. Don't ask me why. But the object of the game is to progress through the levels by defeating the waves of enemy knights riding buzzards. So you're riding buzzards, they're riding buzzards, you're riding an ostrich. Okay, cool. This game was well received in arcades and by critics who praised the gameplay and the mechanics of which influenced other developers. Four years later, Joust received a sequel dubbed Joust 2 and was ported to numerous home and portable platforms. The game is in third person perspective and you are on a flat island surrounded by lava. The joystick controls the horizontal direction that the knight travels while the button flaps the ostrich's wings. The rate at which the player repeatedly flaps causes the ostrich to either fly upward, hover, or slowly descend. Moving off to the left or to the right edges of the screen wraps around the other side. Upon completing a wave, a more challenging one begins. Players pilot the knight to collide with enemies, and the higher of the two jousting lances is the winner. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Electric Gaming. Thank you very much for your subscription. As you can see, we have uh, lava down at the low. Each level, that lava rises, and eventually it will burn the ground beneath you. Uh, you can see me flying, it's very hard to control this. You have to collect those little green eggs before they hatch into other knights. And you have to defeat them all over again. Um, it was very... Uh, stress relieving playing this game even though I was trying to figure it out it was still fun survival wave 2 um I'm not sure about the survival waves but you only have 3 lives um if you 
I think if you die during the survival wave, you don't collect any of the points. And that was the whole point in these games was to collect all the points you could collect. I mean, what better way than to just get on the leaderboard when that arcade machine started up and you saw your name. That was a real achievement right there, guys. Um, you can also, uh, there's a movie about that called The Wizard. Uh, I think Disney produced it. Um, but, as you can see, I am losing all my lives here. And it is not fun to lose my lives. But, being the first time, what can you expect? Uh, very difficult to control this game, but nonetheless, very fun. I hit wave 3, and as soon as it starts, pretty much, I go diagonal, and I get hit, and my game is over. Next quarter, please. Next game. Moving on.